Hey there folks, Gary Bradley here. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can wrap artwork using a warp adjustment to make it look more convincing if it's on a surface that isn't flat, such as the mug that we have here. If this is your first time visiting and you want to learn best practice techniques to create killer artwork, then start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss a thing. Okay, so this is the source file. It's a JPEG. Um, this is from Unsplash. I'm going to then go and add some artwork in here, which has been made inside of Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to place it into this document. So I'll go to the file menu, down to place linked, which will provide me with more options in the future if I want to replace the artwork. And then I have uh, three different quotations that I can use here. I'm going to start off with uh, this one here, the coffee01.ai. Click on place. Accept the default options and click OK. And then my artwork appears in the middle of my canvas. So I'm just going to um, hold down the uh, the Alt key and scale that up in size and the Shift key to uh, maintain the aspect ratio. And then just uh, move that to the front middle of the mug in there like so. Maybe just drop the size down a touch. And then from there, hit the return key or indeed click on the tick in the options bar to apply those changes. So this will appear in the layers panel as a linked file, hence the icon in the bottom right hand side of the thumbnail. And what I need to do in this case is I need to right click on that layer name and then choose convert to smart object to be able to apply a warp to this and also to give us a lot more flexibility in the future. In effect now what we've got here is if I just rename it, quote template. That is literally what we've got. We could replace the artwork and the warp afterwards will stay in place. And so we can just swap the artwork out. It's nice and effortless almost. So to um, edit the artwork and make it look more convincing, I'm going to go to the edit menu, go down to transform to reveal the sub options in here. And amongst them is warp. So when this appears on the screen, we've got a grid of nine squares. Um, these are points of articulation where you can drag the grid lines along and warp the artwork. Notice in the options bar up at the top, you've got a list of presets in here that you could utilize everything from an arc to uh, fish and fish eye and all kinds of things in there i mean the, the one that might look probably the closest in here maybe an arch or a bulge in there uh, you're going to get the effect probably applied quite heavily at first notice then with the presets that you are given two or three different fields in there you could swipe over type in a different number you could indeed hover your cursor over the name in there it is a scrubby slider and left click and drag across that to change those values but um, in this case it isn't really what I want um, but it may be worth trying at some point when you try this I'm going to go back up the list to the top choose none to reset that then go back to custom to reveal the grid now from here what I want to do is I want to just add a slight curve on the top of this so I'm going to hover over these uh, circular points in here just zoom in a little bit closer so we can see this nice and clearly I'm going to hover over there and drag and pull that up like so now, um, you can't really hold down the shift key to lock it into one particular axis in here. So you're going to have to be, you know, a little bit careful when you drag these around and then go to the other side, drag that handle up as well, like so. And then going to click on this point up at the top, drag that one up and then click and drag and pull that one up as well. I'm going to go down to the, uh, turn to the bottom down here and then I will click and drag and pull this handle round. Click and drag at the bottom left hand side, pull this one round as well, and then just curve by pulling the handle down at the bottom as well, that one too. And then I'm just going to hover over the middle upper horizontal line in the grid and just pull that upper touch. And then just go to the one in the center lower section and pull that down a touch as well. I want to just get this feeling like it is wrapping around this surface in here. Maybe just increase that curve down at the bottom so and then when I'm happy with it uh, I can go and click on the tick in the options bar or hit the return key on the keyboard now to help this blend in better with the mug we can now change the blending mode so up at the top where it reads normal uh, in this case with this artwork I'm going to choose color burn this will uh, allow the artwork of the mug in the photograph in the background to show through it's got quite a grainy texture on it and it will also allow the the light that's been refracted off that's been reflected off this should I say um, to show through as well so that just helps ever so slightly uh, now that I've got the initial design on there if I want to change it in the future all I have to do is hover my cursor over the thumbnail for that smart object the court template and then double left click this opens up that layer into a new tab 
which looks like a new document, but it isn't, it's just expanded it open. I can then hide the original, go to the file menu, go down the list to uh, place linked, and pick the other one, Coffee 2. Click on place. Click OK to those options, and then scale it up in size around about the same sort of scale as the original one in there, just to keep everything the same. Click on the tick, go to file, which should really be like save layer, because that's what we're doing. And then when I go back to the tab for the other file, there it is, it's been dropped in. It's got the warp still applied to it inside of there. And I could even go back again, hide this one, and then go to file, choose place linked, and then pick the other one in there as well. So very different designs in here. Again, I can scale these up to match the size that I want to use them at. Click on the tick, go to save this smart object, and then the edits will be pushed back into the other file in there like so. Um, you could always go back into the edit menu at some point in the future. As long as that layer is active, go down to transform and then choose warp. The grid will appear on screen with all the grid mesh itself set as it was before. And you can still edit that. It's not always apparent that you can do that, but it is still there, even though you can't see it or there's no hint to it. Um, I don't want to edit this in this case. I'm going to click on the uh, on the cancel button in there. And um, that is how you can create a template layer in a document as a placeholder to wrap your uh, artwork around a curved surface with a warp inside of Photoshop and then swap it out uh, very easily with different artwork in the future. As always, folks, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And until next time, farewell.